Come September, you have detected gravitational waves. What does that allow us to explore and understand that we did not before? I, mean, I have long thought that uh, the most likely thing for us to see first is collision of two black holes. And if that's what we see, uh, we will then be for the first time opening up a study of, of geometrodynamics. How does warped space and warped time behave in a storm? We, uh, it's as though we've only seen the surface of the ocean on a calm day. We've never seen a storm where there are rolling waves, uh, breaking waves, where there might even be water spouts. Uh, and uh, similarly, we've never seen how warped space behaves and warped time behaves in a storm. I think the goal of this and the great excitement is not uh, detecting gravitational waves. It's not discovering, proving that they're there. It's uh, using them to explore aspects of the universe that we have never ever seen. This is going to be a number of things that will be discovered that uh, are very unexpected. Some things will be proved that uh, you didn't know whether they were true or not. But this is a tool for doing a rich variety of science. For example, if you have a compact binary system, um, say two neutron stars, neutron star, black hole, black hole, black hole, um, they will be in spiraling in towards each other, slowly getting closer, their orbital period um, decreasing like with time um, as they grow closer together. What you would expect to see there is a signal um, with slowly increasing frequency, a chirp signal. Um, and then as they like, kind of grow closer and merge, you know, you'll get this fantastically messy, um, you know, signal. It's like you get two black holes merging with each other, you know, that, that's crazy. And you get this like, kind of new, new black hole um, that kind of you know, created um, and, you know, it's, it's excited and um, releases um, energy in gravitational waves and it will ring down at um, characteristic frequencies that will tell you things about like, kind of the, the mass of the new black hole and the spin. Since I got started, I've always thought that probing what's going on uh, right in the center of black holes or right at the outside of black holes where the curvature of space becomes so wild, I thought that was always the most interesting interesting part of this project. The theory seems so wild to me. I always thought it can't be. It can't be that just like that. And so you know, this would be our first way to really get a handle on uh, does space curve the way that people have been predicting all along or does something really w even more wild happen at the edge when the uh, black holes merge and the curvature becomes really high or new particles created, or does our knowledge of space-time completely break down? Maybe we don't know what space is at all. The, the deepest, most fundamental physics, these are the kinds of things we could discover. When I first started my career at Caltech, roughly a half a century ago, what I wanted to do was uh, discover how, uh, how, what happens then, how, uh, in these, this most wild of imaginable situations for space and time. How does space and time behave? and the LIGO is going to show us. Uh, and we will see this for the first time. It will open up our eyes uh, into, uh, into deep physics that we have not previously understood. Our insights, our understanding of space and time will be completely different uh, 20 years from now because of LIGO plus computer simulations than it is today. And that's just one example of the great richness of things that this is going to do for human understanding of the universe.